so one one consensus Saquon. Barkley. Two, I think it's pretty much consensus guys. Yeah. Um well, so much force and power combined with the lateral ability. I'm all about some guys. Sure. sure. Tons of speed to go with all that. Got to go chalk here. There's a, they, and, and sometimes the last, like I mentioned before, the last couple seasons, it was, you, you, there's, the, these guys are chalk for a reason. They stand out above the rest. The, Darius Geis is, if he's earned himself a conversation to be compared to Barkley, good for him. Right. You and he's I mean? earned, he's, a lot of people, when, especially when Fournette was there last year, was like, oh, he's the better back. Just wait till next year. He's the better guy. Now it's unfortunate. He did have a little bit of injuries that he was battling through in 17, but the 16 tape is, is pretty fun to watch. The 17 tape has, you know, ebbs and flows of him being healthy and not healthy. But it's the same thing happened to Fournette. Right. Fournette's 15 tape was ridiculous, and the 16 was a little nicked up. And it's like, well, as he's trying to just stay out and, you know, not get hurt for the, for the paychecks. And, and he played well banged up. I mean, he, he was did. putting up numbers. He dealt with, with a knee and a leg injury early in the season. He sat out versus Troy. Um, and I think he, he probably lost a little bit of that lateral quickness uh, to his game. So he was just basically and, and banging to, and his top way. And speed. Right. So he was just banging his way to yards. Sure. Because his, his, his you know, legs weren't, weren't right. Um, but then he got healthier as the year went on and culminated. I think it was like Ole Miss or something where he had, you know, 167 right, yeah, yards. And the announcer finally was like, looked like the there was like some, first time he yeah. said he's felt the best that he had in a long time. And um, I mean, he just, he plays so mean. Like he, He's a great banger. He is only 215 pounds. Like, I don't know. Like, he's just he's I'm okay so determined. With that. That's fine with me. Yeah, um, there's a lot of stats that go behind 215 pounds being like the weight for yeah. a superstar and longevity and all that good stuff. Yeah. Now, you know, let, let me just back up to Saquon and his weight, the Trent Richardson syndrome and the Eddie Lacy syndrome. I believe that Saquon can transcend and keep keep from yeah. falling into well, that. It's all in his legs. Love. He's got tree trunk legs. Exactly. They're exactly. But those, horse legs. Those tree trunk legs have fallen into burger love the last couple of <laughs> big solid running it's backs. True. It is true. I'm just saying. Well, I'm just saying. But but Trent Richardson's legs were never that big. It was more around Eddie Lacy midsection the, than it listen, was his legs. But <clears throat> real I don't want to get too side crack off of off of guys here, but like he's a workout warrior like that's what he does that's what he wants to do he's not gonna he's not gonna get paid and get get fat and get get overweight just so. and just throwing it out there as a positive for guys he's not he's not in that mold of maybe a couple burgers messes him no you know, not at all him off no he's he's lean for 215 and, and mean like and i think i think it's fair to call him an underrated pass catcher um he didn't have too many opportunities they're not completing a whole bunch of balls there but I mean, when do they? He only had 32 yeah. receptions over his three-year career. That was but more I mean, than all the wide receivers. Yeah, <laughs> I never really saw him drop anything, and for the most part, it was pretty handsy. So maybe he's not a quote pass catcher, but he could he can catch passes. So. And also the the story behind this guy. Oh my he's god, a, he's right? He's a great guy to root for. You got to be wanting to root for guys. And I don't, yeah. don't mean to take anything away from him when I was mocking those people saying, "Well, the real one ones at one too." But yeah. Just saying, don't get cute. We're not trying to put guys down at all. Barkley, I'd right. rather have Barkley, but guys, yeah, I mean, his dad was like shot at five years old, and he's had to like, I mean, I can't imagine what that'd be like. You're just old enough as a kid to really know what's going on and yeah. to be able to, he said that one of the last things he ever really told his dad was that he was going to become a running back at LSU. Oh, like, that's cool. I'm glad I didn't make any promises like that as a kid. Like, I'm sure I told plenty of people I was going to play in the NBA, but like that soon <laughs> faded. I can't, I can't own up and keep those promises. Like this beast of a monster. True, can. I was supposed to play basketball at Duke. That did not work out. Yeah. So I mean, he he's he's playing out there for his family and for his mom and his brother, and he he's got some easy stuff guy that, to root for. Yeah. I mean, and and it's it's not surprising to see how successful he is, and he's just going to continue to be successful. I was super pumped to take him at one two. For sure, sure, absolutely. But I don't. I don't think we need. Again, I don't think we need to spend a ton of time evaluating this guy. We've kind of the whole time we were breaking down running backs and giving you the full breakdown on these guys. We kind of said, you know, the the top four are kind of chalk and and really whatever order you want. But the one two to me are are pretty uh, solidified. Yeah, and we are talking running backs here, so we're not going to blend in the wide receivers as we go down this list. But and when we get into that later on in, in future uh, podcasts here, the for me, one two is always going to be a running back. It, I, I mean, I don't think there's any chance between the at least the first four that I'm not. I'm just all running backs. I don't yeah. even. I haven't gotten too much into the receiver breakdown. Yeah, but I, I mean, mean I, I like Josh Sutton or Cortland Sutton, Sutton, Sutton and, and uh, Washington James Washington. I do too. Super a I, lot. I but do too. But I'm not taking him in, in the top four. Probably I don't. I don't. 
I completely agree with that. And obviously, if you've been listening to us any time at all, I'm going to be leaning running back heavy. It's running back, running back, running back, running all back, running the back, running back. down the list. And then when you're done with that, you take more running backs, running yeah. backs, running backs, running backs, especially exactly. in rookie drafts. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the running back is back. I mean, like, it, it was a shifting to a passing league, and now these, like, last couple of classes have just infiltrated this talent in the NFL. And, like, yeah, and most teams want, like, two guys that they can, and, and some right. of them can support two guys, and more and more teams are supporting well, two we guys. Well, we were just talking about this off air about how the top end RBs score 100 more points than, sure. than the, you know. The, the Todd Gurley lightning in the bottle this year was 100 points better than any wide receiver. The David Johnson, David Johnson got the hurt. year before. And, I mean, let me, Le'Veon Bell's been on those, those heels the last two years, so let me just take – not just call out singular running backs here for who scored the most. Le'Veon's right behind them. But a quick stat is 17 points or more per game. There's eight running backs last year that averaged 17 or more points per game. There's four wide receivers. So it is and a David pass. Johnson was missing all year. And David so you Johnson's can pretty much just chalk list. up a ninth. Exactly. Yeah. And David Johnson's not in that Ezekiel list. Ezekiel Elliott also didn't play. Uh, he, but no, he's, he was, single, but he he was, was one 20, of those guys. Oh yeah, yeah, 20 points per game when the ones he got. But Dalvin Cook was right there on the edge and only played a couple games. He probably would have averaged more. So the point of that is, is it still is a passing league. None of that changes. But like Jay Wayne mentioned there, the talent and all. And I believe that a lot of this, the the running backs in the last couple of years, they're going through high school systems that are more spread for right. the most part. They're getting, they're getting more of the passing game on their plate getting to college. And then when you get to college, there's hardly any Alabamas out there. And almost all these dudes we're going to talk about today can can catch like yeah it's a it's an ability it's a trait that they it's possess just now becoming right. the norm that so, these dudes can catch well again like we were talking about off air like basically the the running backs just like you were saying about how the high school things like the system's changing it's much exactly. more adept to what's going on eating all, regimens and right, training all regimens. that plays into it but then these these guys who are like your freak athletes basically like when you're younger like the pitcher for your team is the yep. best player and he's the also the best hitter or, yeah right yeah exactly but these guys now that are these freak athletes they're pretty much all i i in my opinion be, are gonna be a little bit more slotted towards the running back position in football because you can they can do everything a running back's doing it or a wide receiver's doing it and you can hand it to them exactly. 20 times a That's, game. Well, they've always the best the best athlete on the field has always been the running back, but Sometimes the running back quarterback. But well, yeah, both. Well, because that's the easiest, quickest way to get the ball in his hands to be the quarterback. But the second easiest guy on the field to get the ball to is the running back because they hand it to him. And so that the 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 running backs in the high school, college, they're, they're they're seeing more of it. But the moral of the story, I mean, it's a superficial break at 17 points a game. If you go down to 16 points a game, it's 10 running backs and eight wide receivers. So it sounded better. It's a better sounding stat if I went up to mm. 17 for and eight to four. You can bend stats in any which way you want. Exactly. To sound so I just like, wanted to right. bring that to super official break at six to between 16 and 17 is that but the reason i wanted to just bring that part up is we're, we're talking rookies and running backs and all this kind of stuff but when you do get into your rookie draft you're trying to just keep there's we say this a lot and we've said it a ton there's catches everywhere in the nfl you can always find wide receivers to make catches casey and i just won a championship in the ffpc league ffpc league and our best wide receiver we had two wide receivers we had larry fitzgerald and jarvis landry no no not not that team oh, larry, oh, oh. larry fitzgerald and marquise lee and on our bench was was super bust. We're just Dante, winning championships we, everywhere. I don't know what teams won. Dante Moncrief and um, Tyra Williams. But, you know, just couldn't even start them all year long. But we've started four running backs. Point of the story is when you get a running back that's getting touches, he gets them more consistently. Even you got a, might, you might have a good wide receiver, but they still have their four for 40 games and their five for 50s. But when you get a good running back that's carrying the rock, getting the hand, ball handed to him 15, 20 times a game and catching five or six passes a game, you just can't can't beat that. Yeah, well, I mean, we're back in full swing. There's three of us here. You know, Big Co's back. We've gotten through two guys. It's time to take a break. Yeah, that's we'll, how we roll. We'll come back with, uh, with, the, with the next uh, two, two guys on the list and, and round out the top four.